Hey, welcome. Thank you for joining the, the OutSystems breakout session. I know it's lunchtime, everyone is eager to go and actually eat, but it's a short session, 19 minutes. I'll try to cover things pretty quickly so everyone can have um, a good time. So today I'll talk about high-performance low-code powered by Amazon Web Services. Um, it will be an interesting conversation just to get to know the OutSystems platform. So before we start, we, we go to the beginning. Your business is unique. Your software should be unique too, which means software that really works for your business and brings differentiated value. So any organization today can go and buy a SaaS package, can buy a commercial product off the shelf. Um, it's true they can customize it a little bit, but at the end of the day, they end up a, li a little with technical debt. They can't upgrade it. They can't update it. And to be honest, all our competitors can also buy the same products. So building custom uh, software actually delivers that competitive advantage. Now, when you look into traditional development today, we know there are a lot of technologies, frameworks, libraries, processes, and talent is very scarce. So finding really good engineers that know all of this is really hard to find. And then applications just keep on piling up because they don't, are not actually done. But you also have automation platforms out there. So everyone has heard about no code, low code. Uh, and these tools do actually accelerate part of the development, but most of these tools actually are very limited. So you can build simple departmental workflow type of applications, but you cannot take it to the more mission critical applications, enterprise type of systems. So backlogs keep growing, and business needs are completely unattended. So the problem keeps piling on, and we always hear these terrible stories from all the organizations we actually talk with. So we introduced high-performance local. So OutSystems as a high-performance local platform, what it brings is full automation of the software delivery lifecycle with no limits, meaning our customers can build home banking applications for billions of users. They build port management systems. They build airport controller systems. So there are no limits for the power of the platform. And when you look into, well, what actually is inside that platform, so it's actually four very simple layers. The first one, full stack, which means a visual development for both for UI, data, and logic. Very simple way to actually develop, create your business logic, create beautiful experiences. You can reuse everything across web, mobile, any channel you like, all in a single uh, unified visual language. Then you also, when you look into organizations, the IT landscape is very complex. So large organizations already have a lot of systems of records, databases, MongoDB, SQL Server, a lot, a lot of those, a lot of databases. They have cloud services, REST, open. So the integration layer is a very important aspect of our systems. You can just connect it easily to any of the systems you actually already have in-house in a couple of minutes you're drag and dropping and use your visual language on top of all these uh, external systems. Then from a lifecycle perspective, we automate the entire cycle. So you can use two stages. You can have a complex CIC cycle of eight to 10 stages. We automate the entire life cycle. So we want to make sure that anyone using our product actually is able to deploy often to production several times per day. They can have a very small lead time for change when delivering changes to the business. So a lot of monitoring that we pack into, into our CI/CD cycles, making sure that anyone can be an elite level software delivery uh, organization. And finally, experiences. So web, mobile, voice, chat, emails, headless applications, APIs, all of that can easily be built uh, with the OutSystems platform. Now, how does it actually look like um, so from a visual ID perspective, you get your own. Uh, what you see is what you get editor. You see the entire web screens. You can model the logic. It's very easy. You can add all the, the conditions and business logic that you need. And you can also just model the data directly in one single editor. So when you're thinking about an application, you can just do it full stack. You put your data, you put your logic, you put your screens, and it's very easy and everything is combined. Integrations, well, 
You can just select if you have a swagger, an open type of technology, you just paste it, you give an example, two seconds, and there you have a perfect REST method, just very easy to drag and drop, and you can use uh, the output and just integrate easily with any type of service. Then from a deployment perspective, mo help monitoring, log tracing, analytics, deployment, everything in one central place so you can control and govern all aspects of your life cycle. And if you want to use Jenkins or other tools, APIs are also available. So if you want to orchestrate the CIC cycles externally, that's perfectly possible. And it's easy to fit into any existing landscape. The end applications, as I said, all, we have a lot of UX frameworks, UI. So it's really easy to build good UX, good looking applications uh, without systems and the, and the platform. When we talk about experiences, one thing that, we, that all of us here in this room have is today, when we actually pick up our cell phone and open one application, our expectations on how that application actually behaves have changed from the past five years. So today, we expect applications that are super performant, always on, scalable, globally distributed. They have a beautiful experience. All of us expect that from any application we use. That's why in the recent couple of years, we saw a huge amount of paradigm shift on the technology used for app development. So everyone now talks about microservices, container, containers, Kubernetes, serverless, site reliability engineers' practices, continuous delivery. So app development has become much more complex. So to really bring the power of cloud-native development to every single developer, we created the OutSystem Developer Cloud. So it's our brand new product. It's completely powered by Amazon Web Services, and it brings the power of cloud development to every single developer. So when we engage with several organizations, it's very common we hear about everything change in the technology, and the actual costs to retrain everyone again, the entire workforce on new technology, is actually pretty prohibitive. What we allow is that any developer, independently of their skill set, they are minutes away from deploying into Kubernetes, creating their own container, running function as a service uh, layer. So everything is very easy with the platform. So we've packaged the latest technology, modern authentication, so our built-in identity and authorization mechanism that we're now using OpenID Connect, built on top of AWS Cognito. So it completely it brings two-factor authentication. It brings much more modern security than any other technology. If you want to use your own external one, like Talk that we saw in the previous presentation, you can also just configure it, and it also works, because it, all of these are pretty open uh, protocols. Then you have Linux containers and serverless databases. So uh, Iki, Amazon, EKS, Amazon Aurora, all of these we, we use behind the scenes. And these ensure that no matter the number of developers you actually have on the platform, or the number of end users that you have using our applications, the platform always scale. Any unpredictable usage peak, we've got you covered. The platform will automatically adapt to any type of load you actually put into the system. Then, of course, modern global CDNs, uh, security by design. So we invested a lot making sure the platform adheres to the most modern uh, security and compliance standards. And open telemetry. So open telemetry, what, what this means is everything that happens inside the platform, it's available following the open telemetry protocol. So if you're using New Relic, Datadog, or Dynatrace, uh, you can just connect, stream the logs. You can just use your own tool of choice to actually have all the information on the runtime um, of the OutSystems Developer Cloud. So in a summary, the Developer Cloud brings high productivity with visual development, an integrated life cycle and simplified governance, and what we call a Netflix-like infra out of the box powered by AWS. So this is the part where you get to scale to those billions of users. Everything is taken care of behind the scenes, which is really, really expensive to actually maintain and have teams ready for all this using investment. Of course, one thing I'd like to, to highlight is actually this AI-powered layer. So the entire product is actually powered by AI, and we use it for several different uh, outcomes that I would like to share. So the first one, and probably everyone is one of the most common topics is to ensure that we help our customers, everyone that's using out systems, to build applications powered by AI. 
So we bring all the current services. We want to help them bring. We have a lot of customers talking about, well, I want a customer portal, or I want a support portal that deflects requests, or I want to build campaigns, or I want to use Gen AI. So all these use cases are completely piling up around the world, so we want to make sure we actually cater to our customer needs. Then on the right, the other two examples are internal to the platform. The middle one, optimizing the lifecycle with AI, is all about this compressing the time that a developer takes to actually deploy an application up to production. So we use AI to produce with analytics, to produce insights, and provide security to ensure that everyone that's deploying understands the impact. Is there something going to break? Do I need something that is not there? So this is impact analysis, a very important AI layer that we have that actually enables this speed of delivery. So if you want to deploy every single day to production, like Netflix engineers, well, you need a security and a good CI CD process to actually be able to, to, to pull that off. And then on the third pillar, accelerating development and change with AI. This means compressing the time a developer spends developing the actual application. So on the ODC Studio, and we'll see it in a bit, we already packed a lot of code mentors and suggestion-driven AI models to help with development and, su and suggesting really the best way to implement. But we also have something very cool. I'm not going to show it today, but we can, you can Google it and see it. It's public, which we call Project Morpheus, where we're actually using a full new development experience just with generative AI, which is, which is pretty interesting. But for this session, and to show you a little bit uh, what we're doing, I want to talk about the helping customers with low code. So today, we already have the most common AWS AI services available. All those connectors are there out of the box. It's just drag and drop, and they are working. So it's minutes to have an application that's using machine learning, that's using uh, any type of these, of these examples. And we have worldwide customers already leveraging this. Very interesting success. Now, as I said before, we're getting to a point where everyone wants to talk about Gen AI. So how can I build those new use cases? What can I do? Where can I, how do I get to use the technology? How can we use it? And what we're actually announcing this week, side by side with, with AWS, is actually the AWS Bedrock Connector. So it's out of the box, supported by out systems. You can just use the connector. You have all the Bedrock services already available. You can just drag and drop whatever model you want to use and build re really rich applications that actually leverage the Gen AI power. So what I want to do is I have seven minutes, so I'll walk you through a seven-minute demo of actually using a high-performance local platform with the most modern AWS AI services all together to build it actually a simple use case. So it gets a little bit technical, but just, just join me in just realizing how it works. So hopefully there will be a video. Let's try one more. No. <laughs> OK, maybe they, someone can help me with the video. There we go. So it's probably a large video and takes some time to load. We get there. OK, so uh, in this demo, we see an e-commerce site. OK, you can see the sales order. It's a back office. We're seeing everything that got sold on the site, a very common type of pattern you see in out systems. And below, we can see the sales orders. Here we see the detail. Alessandra actually bought the products. She bought a mountain backpack and hiking books. You can see the amounts. And below, we have the recommended products. So we already understand what should we recommend to this user, for instance, if he comes back to the store again. Now, really interesting would be, can I create a marketing campaign to actually go after these customers and tell them, well, you should buy this next. Right? This is, but the, the challenge here is, if we think about all the combinations that products that you can buy versus products that can be recommended, it's a really, really big endeavor. So this is a perfect case we can actually use Gen AI and Amazon Bedrock to actually help us build these marketing campaigns always tailored for the customers that we're looking for. So we can go to Amazon Bedrock, and if we think about the marketing campaign, well, first thing, one of the entropic models, we use Cloud V2 because we want to generate the text. We want good text, and the text needs to be dynamic and connected to the actual customer. So it needs to say our name, it has a good expression. So we're going to use Cloud V2 directly inside our systems to generate the text for the marketing campaign. But if you really want the marketing campaign to be interesting and, and, and compelling, well, we got to have an image. So we're going to use the Stability AI model and Stable Diffusion to actually generate an image that goes with the text and tries to be appealing to someone that gets that and say, well, maybe I should buy, I don't know, the hiking sticks. 
Okay? So let's see how we actually uh, build this scenario using out systems and, um, and the connector. So a lot of this is around going to the mountain, boots, <laughs> hiking, but it's a good example. OK, so this is our typical IDE. This is in the white theme. It's not, I prefer the black one, but it's OK. And what we're going to do is we go to the recommended product list. We're going to add a button, pretty simple, called Create Campaign. So super simple to, to build. We can style the button, put it uh, the size we want, style, so pretty standard things. And here, what we want to do is actually open a pop-up that allows First, we'll do it manually to test it before we send like a blast email to thousands of people. We'll do it manually to see how it works. So we can just validate that, that the pop-up is open. And then what we'll have to do, which is pretty standard if you're actually integrating with a large language model, is to build a prompt, right? So we need to have a way to send the information into Claude to get a viable text for our prompt. So my colleague that's writing the prompts is a little bit slow and will make some mistakes, but we can follow it around. But what he's going to ask uh, the model is create a message to inspire our customer. And they, here, what we're going to do is add the dynamic name. So this is not one prompt for Alexander. He's want to do a prompt that's totally generic. So I want to say, create a message to inspire our customer. Whatever name is where we're clicking on the list for the customer, stating that it is a good idea to have. And then let's go to the list and get the recommended products that we have for that user. So the prompt we're building actually works for any user, any product. So it's pretty dynamic. And we can have, and you can say, since they al already have, and then we can have the product they actually bought. So basically what they're saying is, Hi, Alessandra. Um, we want to convince you to buy this because you already bought that, and we want uh, Claude to help us create, actually create that text for the marketing campaign. And we probably, I would say, yeah, probably in less than 40 words. So make sure we don't, we don't get back and Claude doesn't deliver like a full list of words and, and marketing tools. So we've got the text prompt. Nice, uh, pretty easy. We probably now need to actually send the prompt into uh, the system. So we can go back to the screen, check for the pop-up that we're going to use. And what we want to do is, when we actually click on that button, what we want to say is, we want to look for the Claude action. So this comes out of the box if you're using one of those models. You can just look for it, and we want to invoke model Claude v2. And then very simply, the prompt is the one we actually wrote. So every time someone clicks the button, We'll generate that prompt, we'll send it into Claude, and we'll get, we'll get a, a, a great response back from the model. Afterwards, yeah, we need to do the image prompt, which is very similar, but this time we're talking with the stable diffusion model. So we'll create, it's very similar, create an image. OK, cool. In autumn, we should be in autumn. It's still hot, but it's autumn, with warm colors, OK, of a person. Hiking, OK, using. OK, so we're going to ask for an image of someone that's hiking using the recommended product, whatever it is. OK. And the person also has the product they bought. So give me, give me an image of someone hiking with the product they bought and the product I'm recommending them. So that would make for a compelling image for this marketing campaign. So to make sure we group the text with the image, and then we do the same thing, which is basically look for the API to call the stable diffusion. We send it the image prompt we just created. And then very simply, we just need to assign the output of, the output of those calls into, um, into the campaign pop-up, and we should be ready to go. So basically, when we do the one CP, it's behind the scenes. We're compiling all the code. We're generating the code, creating the containers, uh, adapting the database if needed, making sure all integrations are up to date. And we do all this in one single step. So everything happens behind the scenes. And when it's done, there's a container deployed in Kubernetes, EKS, Amazon EKS, that actually is running and has the application. 
We refresh the application. We now have the new Create Campaign button. And we can ask for an example of what would the marketing campaign actually look like. A couple of seconds to go back to AWS Bedrock. And we should hopefully, we're going to see the image that was generated, which actually looks pretty nice. And you can see the text. Dear Alexandra, since you already have a mountain backpack, hiking sticks are a perfect addition. They'll provide stability on an uneven terrain and take pressure off your knees during long treks. Go for it. So both image and text fully generated with the new uh, AWS Bedrock. <laughs> so great example on how simple it becomes to combine both products. Okay? The, and this is something that we're seeing worldwide. Everyone is requesting this type of interfaces, this type of experiences. So keep, keep that in mind. And I'm one minute after time, but I do hope that you enjoyed this, this 20 minutes. Okay? Thank you so much.